Hello, how are you doing? My name is Professor RSK and I will be your facilitator. Don't forget to keep safe by washing your hands with soap and under running water. Wear your nose mask and practice social distancing. Do well to write all your questions in the comments section. And also note that your comments are welcome. Join me in class for today's lesson. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. You can also join us on all social media platforms by clicking on the link below. You can also read more lessons on our website www.profrsk.com Thank you. Hello. Welcome once again to the world of science with Prof. RSK. Today, we are going to look at nutrition in animals. In our previous lesson, we discussed nutrition in plants. We understood from that class that plants are able to prepare their own food by a simple process called photosynthesis. In this process, the plant uses carbon dioxide, water, in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll to make food available. In this lesson, we get to learn from other living things that are not able to prepare their own food. We call them heterotrophs. They are unable to prepare their own food. And so they depend on other plants and other animals for survival. Now, join me in this class as we break down this topic. So as discussed, nutrition is the process by which food or nutrient is acquired. And in animals, acquisition of food is not enough. The process by which the food is broken down and nutrient assimilated or utilized is very, very important. So, we said that food is consumed and then utilized by the body. So, in nutrition, in animals, it is not just eating the food, but also utilizing the food that was eaten. Now, animals adapt heterotrophic mode of nutrition. This is because Animals are unable to prepare their own food, as established earlier. Animals do not have the ability to prepare their own food, and so they depend on other animals or plants for their food. The mode of nutrition is broken down into three under the food habits in animals. The first one is herbivorous. Animals that are herbivorous usually depend on plants only for survival. So if we can break it down, we have herbs and then voros. The voros means consuming, eating, and herbs means plant. So plant eaters, okay? So Voros will talk about eaters. So, heavy or herb means plant eaters. So, that can help you to easily remember what we're talking about. Heavy voros, plant eaters. So, they are animals that feed on plants only. 
Cow is an example. Goat is an example. Deer is an example. And the examples go on and on. Now, the second group is the carnivorous. Can or carny. And for us, already we know that this one is eaters. Okay, so eaters. Carny means flesh. So flesh eaters. Simple. Flesh eaters. Carnivorous. Carny Voros, flesh eaters. So, carny or can refers to flesh and voros. We have established earlier eaters. So, carnivorous means flesh eaters. They are animals that depend solely on flesh for survival. Example: the tiger, mm -hmm. the eagle. Uh huh. Let the example go on. You have so many. All right, lion, cheetah, and so many, they are also part of the carnivorous um, mode of feeding, all right? So, carnivorous animals are animals that feed on flesh, all right? They feed on other animals, they feed on flesh. Then we meet the third one, which is omnivores. Omnivores are animals that depend on plants, and other animals. They depend on plants and other animals. Omni means multi or many. All right? And voros is eaters. So multi. many eaters or multi eaters, meaning they depend on plants and also animals. You can give many examples. Man is one of them. Dog, crow, and many other examples. Now, the processes involved, the processes involved in acquisition of food and then the breakdown of food is also very, very important. Let's quickly look at the processes involved. The first one is injection. This is the process by which food is taken in into the body. The process of putting food into the money, into the, into the mouth, rather to say, sorry, the process of putting food into the mouth, all right? That is injection, putting food inside. Then the second one is digestion, the process of breaking down the food. The process of what? Breaking down the food. We'll look at digestion in our, in our next lessons. We'll, we'll, we'll consider di digestion. We will get to understand what digestion really means. The process of breaking down food assimilating for energy to be obtained. Then, from digestion, which is the breaking down of food, complex food, into simpler substances, we come to assimilation. Assimilation is the process by which the body uses the energy or the nutrient that has been obtained from the food that is broken down. So, from carbohydrates, we get sugar, which is glucose. The body use, utilizes the glucose to giving us more and more energy. So that is assimilation. After assimilation, then we come to ejection. Ejection is the process by which the body releases the undigested food, the unwanted food from the body. So a recap of the process, we have ejection, putting food in, digestion, breaking down the food, assimilation, using the food that has been processed, and then ejection is removing the unwanted food from the body. I believe you have enjoyed this lesson. Let's meet again for our next lesson. My name is Prof. RSK. Thank Bye -bye. you very much for joining us for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Kindly subscribe to our channel and help it grow. Read more on our website www.profrsk.com and search for Prof RSK on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest and Telegram. Join us again for another lesson. Bye bye.